Chalicotherium was a prehistoric herbivorous mammal with a truly bizarre appearance with no modern animal remotely resembling its form. Roughly the size of a large horse with some of the largest species growing up to 2.6 meters tall and weighing around 1,500 kilograms, Chalicotherium had a rugged body, a long neck and a small head. It had a head like a wild horse forelimbs as long as a gorilla's arms, thick curved claws like a scythe and a small hunched rear end like a ground sloth. This combination created an unprecedented evolutionary form with a diet consisting mainly of leaves. Chalicotherium is a unique example of mammalian evolution occupying an ecological niche, unlike any species alive today. But how exactly did such a contradictory creature manage to exist? Picture this fundamental contradiction, a mammal that belongs to the same evolutionary group as horses and rhinos, yet sports massive curved claws instead of hooves. When paleontologists like Edouard Latte first unearthed Chalicotherium fossils in the 1830s, they faced an anatomical puzzle that looked paradoxical because it combined hooved mammal hind anatomy with long clawed forelimbs, a combination that puzzled early scientists and led to multiple, sometimes contradictory identifications. The genus was named in 1833, but early finds led to misidentifications with claws initially thought to be from anteaters or pangolins. The morphological contradiction ran deeper than just the claws. Chalicotherium possessed the, the robust hindquarters and powerful leg bones, typical of hoofed mammals designed for supporting substantial weight and enabling swift movement across varied terrain. Yet its front limbs told a completely different evolutionary story. The forelimbs featured elongated finger bones, flexible wrist joints, and those infamous sickle-shaped claws that measured up to eight inches in length. It was as if nature had taken two separate animal designs and welded them together without regard for functionality. Early scientists struggled to make sense of these fossils. The first discoveries led to multiple misidentifications with researchers literally assigning claws and skulls to different animals, some parts classified as macrotherium, while others were labeled chalicotherium. Some paleontologists argued the claws belonged to giant ground sloths, while others insisted the hip bones came from primitive horses. The scientific community spent years debating whether these anatomical features could even belong to the same animal, let alone function together in a living creature. On the surface, the claws look incompatible with typical ungulate locomotion, but later anatomical study showed how the forelimb, wrist and shoulder were modified to make this workable. Part of the solution is that Chalicotheres evolved in two different directions, Schizotherians and Chalicotherians, with distinct limb and feeding adaptations. Yet evolution rarely produces true mistakes that persist for millions of years. What appeared to be a biological contradiction was actually something far more remarkable, a masterpiece of specialized adaptation. This seemingly impossible creature had developed sophisticated anatomical solutions that allowed it to move efficiently while protecting its most valuable feeding tools. The key to understanding this adaptation lies in how Chalicotheres actually moved. Imagine watching a creature the size of a draft horse, carefully placing its knuckles on the ground and walking forward like an enormous gorilla. This striking locomotion was Chalicotherium's solution to protecting its most valuable feeding tools while maintaining mobility. The challenge was significant. Chalicotherium needed to move efficiently across varied terrain while keeping its razor sharp claws in perfect condition for feeding. Walking directly on those claws would quickly dull them against rocks and hard ground, rendering them useless for their specialized feeding role. Yet the animal couldn't simply retract them like a cat since these massive tools were permanently extended and integral to the finger structure. Important nuanced Chalicotherians evolved long forelimbs and knuckle walking and could not retract their claws, whereas Schizotherians had retractable claws walked on the sole of the foot and adopted different feeding strategies. For the Chalicotherians, like our focus species, knuckle walking provided the perfect compromise. 
Calicotherium evolved remarkably similar locomotion to modern gorillas and chimpanzees, despite sharing no recent evolutionary connection with these primates. The anatomical modifications required for this gait were extensive and sophisticated. The shoulder blades became broader and more muscular to support the animal's weight on its knuckles. The wrist bones developed specialized joints that could lock into position during weight bearing, while the finger bones grew thick and robust to handle the constant impact. We infer knuckle walking from anatomy thickened pad bearing manual phalanges and wrist and shoulder adaptations indicate these animals bore weight on their knuckles to protect claws. The pad supporting bony growth on the dorsal manual phalanges shows exactly where callous knuckle pads would have developed while specialized wrist facets reveal how weight was distributed during locomotion. Other clawed mammals solve this protection problem differently. Ground sloths developed thick blunt claws that could handle ground contact, while modern anteaters use their knuckles only occasionally. Calicotherium's commitment to knuckle walking was absolute, representing a complete restructuring of front limb anatomy and movement patterns. This seemingly awkward gait proved remarkably efficient for forest environments. The slow, deliberate movement allowed precise navigation through dense vegetation while maintaining perfect claw condition. With their claws protected and their mobility preserved, these animals were perfectly positioned to exploit food sources that other herbivores simply couldn't reach. They weren't just eating leaves in place, their claws let them harvest canopy resources other herbivores couldn't reach, pulling down branches and stripping leaves fruit or bark. While modern large herbivores either graze on ground level vegetation or browse on accessible branches, Chalicotherium actively manipulated forest canopies to access otherwise unreachable food sources. Most large herbivores face a fundamental limitation in dense forests. The best nutrition often grows well above their heads. Giraffes evolved long necks, elephants use their trunks, but Chalicotherium developed a completely different solution. Those massive claws became sophisticated tools for manipulating the uh, forest canopy itself. The animal would rear up on its hind legs, hook high branches with its curved claws and pull entire sections of tree canopy down to mouth level. This feeding technique required remarkable precision and strength. Chalicotherium would select specific branches, test their flexibility, then apply controlled force to bend them within reach without breaking them completely. The process resembled a systematic harvesting operation with the animal methodically working through different sections of forest canopy. Some Chalicotherians sat back on their hindquarters and fed with clawed forelimbs, a posture convergent with Gelada's ground sloths and even Therizinosaur dinosaurs, while Schizotherians favored reaching with long necks or tongues. Microware studies show regional differences North American Chalicotheres ate soft leaves mixed with twigs and grit, while some European Chalicotherians ground down seeds and hard fruits. Not all Chalicothers ate the same menu. North American relatives like Meropus showed evidence of consuming soft leaves mixed with twigs and bark, particularly during drier seasons, when they became what scientists call dirty browsers. European species developed different preferences entirely. Some consumed fruit regularly, while others specialized in seeds, nuts, and hard fruits to such an extent that their tooth were initially resembled that of grass-eating animals. Different species carved out distinct feeding niches within forest ecosystems. Some focused on stripping bark from selected trees, others harvested seasonal fruits, and still others practiced selective leaf browse from specific tree species. This dietary diversity allowed multiple Chalicotherium species to coexist in the same forest without direct competition. The feeding revolution created by these clawed herbivores established an ecological role that would prove both remarkably successful and surprisingly vulnerable. For millions of years, this unique adaptation allowed them to thrive across vast forest landscapes. The Chalicothere family range from roughly the Middle Eocene 
to the early Pleistocene, establishing themselves as one of evolution's most enduring success stories. During their peak, different species carved out specialized niches across vast geographic ranges, with some lineages thriving in North American woodlands, while others dominated European and Asian forests. Africa hosted its own unique Chalicothere communities, each adapted to local forest conditions and food sources. This widespread success demonstrated that the knuckle-walking, claw-wielding lifestyle could flourish under diverse climatic conditions. Their diversity peaked in the Miocene, but the late Miocene epoch brought devastating climatic shifts that transformed the world Chalicotheres knew. Global temperatures began cooling, while precipitation patterns shifted dramatically, creating drier conditions across many continents. These changes triggered the expansion of C4 grasses, highly efficient plants that thrived in warm, dry environments and began replacing the mosaic forests Chalicotheres required. Late Miocene, Pliocene, cooling and drying converted many forests to open grasslands. Meanwhile, artiodactyl browsers and grazers with more efficient digestive systems spread across these new environments. Together, these environmental and competitive pressures eroded the Chalicothri's niche. Open savannas and prairies offered little for animals specialized in manipulating tree canopies and browse on high branches, while horses, antelopes and other grazing specialists possessed anatomical features perfectly suited for life in open country. The two evolutionary solutions that had defined Chalicothere success knuckle, um, walking canopy specialists and long necked or long tongued reachers worked well in forests, but both became vulnerable as habitats changed. Competition intensified as traditional forest habitats disappeared. The same anatomical specializations that had made Chalicotheres masters of their woodland domains became fatal limitations in a grassland world. Their massive claws, knuckle-walking gait and forest. Adapted feeding strategies offered no advantages in environments dominated by running and grazing. Some Chalicothere lineages persisted in parts of Africa and Asia into the Pleistocene, but their diversity dropped sharply after the Miocene as forests contracted. When the forests disappeared, so did most of the creatures who had shaped them, leaving behind only fossils as evidence of evolution's remarkable capacity for creative solutions. While the fossils provide a clear picture of Chalicotherium's unique anatomy and diet, much about its daily life, remains a mystery. Scientists can only infer its social behavior, and it is unknown whether these animals lived in solitary or social herds. Similarly, while no specific predator-prey evidence exists, it is highly likely that large carnivores of the time, such as saber-toothed cats, would have preyed upon young or old Chalicotheres, and they would have played a key role in the food web of their ancient ecosystems. Though long extinct, the legacy of Chalicotha extends far beyond its fossilized bones. It is not just a scientific curiosity, but a timeless source of inspiration living on in museums, lecture halls, and our collective imagination. Reconstructed models of Chalicotha are a source of fascination in major museums like the AMNH New York and the Senckenberg Frankfurt. For paleontologists, it is a perfect teaching tool for illustrating evolutionary specialization and optimally temporary creature, as Professor Thomas Holtz once remarked. It wasn't a great ancestor, but a uniquely successful story in its own era, challenging all conventional evolutionary rules. It is the bizarre one-of-a-kind appearance of Chalicotha that has made it an unforgettable mark on popular culture. Its horsehead primate arms claws form has been repeatedly used as a motif by creature designers. In the animated film The Good Dinosaur 2015, many keen-eyed viewers believe some of the forest creatures were inspired by Chalicotha. Especially in the world of gaming, Capcom created monsters like Rajang and Kongalala in the Monster Hunter series with their hunch posture, long arms and ground scraping claws, clearly reminiscent of its unique knuckle walking gait. Even in paleo art, Chalicotha appears not just as a real creature, but with a mystical, almost mythical aura. 
It is a symbol of nature's past audacity, a creature representing a forgotten yet utterly unique evolutionary branch. Extinction could not erase such a special creature. Chalico there will live on not in flesh, but in unanswered questions and the unending human imagination. Chalicotherium represents one of evolution's most creative experiments in solving ecological challenges. Evolution produced radically different solutions to the same problem of accessing high canopy resources. Uh, some Chalica theories developed knuckle walking with massive claws, while others evolved long necks or specialized tongues. Yet their extreme specialization also created long-term vulnerability when forest environments transformed into grasslands during climate shifts. They're a vivid example of convergent evolution. These creatures adopted ape-like, sloth-like, and even therizinosaur-like solutions to harvest leaves from trees. Their 46 million year success across three continents proves that seemingly impossible anatomical combinations can work brilliantly when matched to stable environments. However, their extinction reminds us that even the most successful specialists remain fragile when habitats disappear. Which Chalico their trait do you find most baffling? The claws, the knuckle walking, or their tooth adaptations? Tell us why in the comments.